Hello everyone, uh, this is Gerald again and now I'm back with another uh, video uh, episode uh, regarding the uh, Flutter development. Okay, so let us open that Visual Studio Code and <coughs> my Android Studio emulator. So in my previous video, I did a simple Hello World application, a mobile application, uh, using Flutter framework. Uh, and now I will be introducing the state, a simple state management uh, through stateful widgets. So let's open this. So while we are waiting for the emulator to show up, let's create a new project. And I'm gonna call this project counter app state pool. Okay. So I'm adding the word the term state pool uh, just to distinguish um this type of or this um, <clears throat> type of uh, state management from others like block uh, provider um, rx data and so forth okay so this folder so now it's downloading the resources i suppose yes there you go And just like yesterday, uh, we will be doing this from scratch. Uh, so later on, I will be deleting this test folder. And then I will be emptying the contents of that main.dart file. All right. So once again, uh, we will be only dealing with main.dart file for now. Um, and late, okay. Uh, we will not be adding any packages yet. That's why I'm not um, gonna be working on the pubspec.yaml file. So let's start by importing the material.dart. Uh, package and then let's create the main function so to kick off our development and I'm gonna pass in our run app method which accepts um, a widget so let's just name the widget uh, home page now. Okay, let me just refactor this. So, uh, this home page uh, will be okay. Let's just create a separate folder for the source and then screens. And then uh, home page not dark. And then again, I will be importing the package. And then this time, I will be creating a state pool widget. So there you go. Home page. And then I'll save it. And then in the main the dark file again, I will just uh, press control dot. And then I'll just select this. And voila, 
I think it's good now. Okay. Hmm. Wait a second. Uh, I think we could just uh, refactor this a little bit. Uh, since I would want to separate, uh, I would want to create another widget. Uh, that is apart from the home page. So I think we could refactor this. Oops, sorry about that. So instead of a state for one, I think we could just create stateless widget. Let's name it as home page. So in this particular stateless widget, we will be creating the material. We will be building a material app a widget. And inside of it, we could declare new. Uh, we could specify the theme data with a primary swatch of, let's say, what color? Like colors dot deep, or what about deep? Dark. Oh, there's no dark blue. No, blue, gray. And then we could specify debug, show check mode banner on, apps for. Okay, and then let's not forget about the home. And this home right here uh, requires a widget, which will be our default routing for the app. Okay. Actually, this particular set of code could be... <coughs> So instead of home page, I will just remove this app. Okay, and then okay. So I did this because uh, this main that dark file. Uh, well, in my own opinion, should show this main function as well as the app for the main widget, which is the app. And this time I will be. Uh, okay. Creating a new stateful one. And this stateful widget will be the home page. So home page. Okay, and as you may notice, uh, it all it automatically uh, imported this package right here or this file, the home underscore page uh, And in this, so since we have already declared the material app uh, here, then we could just create. Uh, staple widget and then which builds a particular or scaffold so let's create a scaffold and again this scaffold will has a couple of properties the common ones would be the app bar 
Rich except it's the app bar <coughs> widget and this app bar widget has a property that accepts a text I believe. Okay. Counter app space. Okay. Pull counter app. Okay, and then I will just press F5 in order to launch the uh, program in our emulator right here. So again, since this is the first time um, to install this app, it will take a couple of minutes, but it's worth the wait because later on uh, we will just uh, reload this uh, very easily. So while it is loading, let me just show you. So here is the place where I typically get information about water and the type so so I'm going straight to the documents or documentation uh, and also I could uh click this menu uh, to search something let's say oh. And it's loading, it's still loading. Anyway, oh, there we go. So our app is well, good right now. So we have the app bar, but we need the body. And in the body, I will be defining or adding a couple of widgets. So this one will be a simple one, I suppose. So in the body, I will create another widget, maybe a, uh, let's see, a state plus one, I suppose. Uh, what could we create here? Huh. Okay, so let's start by having a center widget. And this is center widget will have a child of a column widget, and this column widget will accept a chosen widget. And inside this chosen widget, we could um, <coughs> uh, add a couple more uh, widgets inside. So the first one or the first widget that I can I will be adding is called text widget which will set a value of let's say counter value uh, later on this value will be a number or we'll just take a zero uh, another widget would be a set of rows. Uh, but before that, I will, I would want to add a little bit of spacing between the text widget and the row widget. 
uh, and I will declare a size box here and this size box will accept a height property value of let's say 20 pixels okay so now let's work on our oops there you go as you can see there's zero right there let's change the styling a bit style and this would accept text styling with the font size of let's say 80 pixels Um, okay. okay, so let's arrange. Oops. I don't think it could be across since it's already centered. So, how about the axis alignment and the mean set? Axis alignment at center. Okay, there you go. So, <coughs> we now have the value and it will have a spacing of 20 pixels. Now, let's work on our row. In our row, we will add two. Uh, button digits. So, so I raise button digit. Okay, and then raise button digit. So have <coughs> a title or let's see the required one. On press function, so okay. So it requires an on press function. And then aside from that, so as soon as I press control and then spacebar, it will show me a list of shortcut keys and as well as the properties here. So I will add the child property that will accept an icon and that icon will be add Okay, so <coughs> icons that add uh, to signify uh, the addition property. Now it's not yet working, but later on we will add functionality to that. And then let's see. Okay. <clears throat> so let's search for this in the API. Okay. We you will be seeing a sample. Uh, a round button in material attributions. Okay, 
maybe I would want to have this one instead. Floating action button. Hey, let's see. Oh, there you go. Uh, I think my thing is a little bit gloomy, so I will be changing that to color orange instead. Yes. Okay, so again, um, this time we'll be uh, having another spacing. Uh, but let's just take a peek here and then remove. Okay, so as you can see, our values are showing up right away as soon as I hit save. I will be adding a space between those two buttons and size box with the width of 10 pixels there you go <laughs> okay now i will be checking here Mm -hmm. Okay, so I will be adding a tooltip to describe the action that will occur. Uh, for some, for tire to sick. So, tooltip of increment. And another tooltip of Increment. Okay, so now let's work on the state. So I will be declaring here a variable, uh, an integer counter is equals to zero, and this counter value. Uh, is what we will be uh, working on in our uh, what we will be changing here. So the zero right here is the current state of this counter variable, and uh, and to show this one, uh, I will go down my <coughs> here, and then. Okay, so it's still it will still show zero because that is the current state. So now what will what I will be doing is that I will create two functions <coughs> that would uh, change the state. So the first one would be the increment function. And the second one would be the decrement function. Okay. To change the state of, of our <coughs> to change the state of our underscore counter, we will be set doing a set, uh, set state. And okay, inside the set state, I will be doing underscore counter. So let me just refactor this a little bit.
No, it's not me. <laughs> okay. So, here's the definition of the set state. So, it will notify our framework uh, that the internal state of our object will be changed. So, in this case, uh, this is the current state and its current value is zero. And since we are setting the state to uh, add another, add one to it, then it will update the underscore counter as soon as uh, we call this increment function. Okay. So I will just copy this and then paste it right here. And this time, I will uh, replace it or change it to two minus signs to signify uh, counter minus one. And that's it. Now, uh, we will be, so remember we have an on pressed property here and this on pressed property inside the floating action button requires a function. So this time we will be calling the increment and the decrement. Uh, functions here. So, increment. Okay. So uh, let's just click heart restart, trigger heart restart, and. Okay. Actually, we could lose that um, input system. Ooh, there you go. Since increment is already a dynamic function, then it will be called. So, one, two, three. There you go. So we have the stateful counter app uh, working right now. Actually, what if I add this thing up here? It will not work. Uh, okay. So we'll just call the function by the name. Okay. So I'm just adding a void keyword since we are not returning anything uh, uh, from our function. And that's it. So uh, I think that that will be it for our episode. So just to summarize, uh, if we're going to um, create, or if we're going to be utilizing a stateful widget, then we could, uh, we will be able to change uh, a data inside of it, or even outside if we declare it on a separate page. Um, uh, this is the difference between the stateful and the stateless widget. Uh, with the stateless widget, like this one in the main function, it doesn't contain any state. Okay, uh, so it's a plain, simple widget. But with a stateful widget, we're declaring a value right here that will contain a state. So in this case, we have an integer. Uh, variable called underscore counter and the current state of it is zero and inside of it uh, of this uh, class of each state class we could add to or add uh, multiple values as well 
for multiple functions. And okay. And also we learned about um, adding a couple of widgets, new widgets from yesterday. So we added the floating action button, buttons here, size box to add the uh, space in between our widgets. Uh, we also learned how to add icons on our buttons. Okay, so I think in my next episode, uh, I will be recreating this counter app, but this time I will be using a provider package because uh, I think it um, it would be best, uh, especially if we will be building a large a large application. So, as you may have noticed earlier here, our our stateful widget contains the state but if we are going to be building a huge application then we would need to divide the business logic from the interface and the best way to do it is i, I think in my opinion would be block or provider using the provider package uh, rx dart would be an awesome um, methodology to use as well so i think in my next episode uh, i will be showing how to recreate this stateful counter application but and separate the state the state management from the uh, ui or the user interface of our application uh, that's it thank you for watching